Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Today is Monday, and Monday is Milky Mama Monday around our Empowering Mamas group. So every Monday I jump in here live and I do my best to bring you all evidence-based information surrounding the lactation process. And um, I like to bust some myths around um, breastfeeding and a lot of the things that I hear and read about and circulating around the interwebs um, that is inaccurate or often dangerous um, so that you can be best prepared uh, for your lactation journey, wherever that may be, uh, whether you're learning prior to um, delivering your little one or if you're in the middle of breastfeeding. Um, and hopefully even if you are a old pro and you've been doing this for a while, I'm hoping that um, these educational segments still bring you some really valuable information uh, that you can apply to your own lactation journey. So as a quick way of introduction, my name is Jessie Sletton. I am a postpartum empowerment coach and I am the owner and facilitator of this group. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, welcome, welcome. This is meant to be an interactive group, so please feel free to drop any questions, concerns, anything motherhood related is all welcome here. Um, as I mentioned, I am a post a uh, postpartum empowerment coach and my passion really lies in helping moms exchange surviving for thriving um, through holistic recovery plans that focus on uh, healing, nourishing, and bonding in the postpartum time frame. Um, and I am so happy to be here tonight to talk to you about lipase. What's the deal with lipase is the name of this Milky Mama Monday training. Um, this may or may not be something that you have heard of. Usually high lipase milk is something that we don't really know much about until it is affecting us <laughs> and our breastfeeding journey. It can be something that's a little tricky um, and it may be something that you never encounter. Uh, it's just one of those things. So I thought I'd tackle some of the um, big questions around lipase, what exactly it is, uh, what you can do about it. If it's causing an issue with your breastfeeding journey, it might not even be causing you a problem like I mentioned before. Um, and then some of the things that are evidence-based and safe for you to treat a high lipase um, milk supply if that is something that you are struggling with. And then I'm going to mention one thing that I see a lot of people recommend uh, and I'm going to give my little evidence-based warning against it um, just so that you have all of the information you need that is accurate and up-to-date as far as the latest research. Sorry, I get thirsty when I talk a lot. So um, okay, so let's dive in. I think I might have one person live with me. Um, if you are catching this live, let me know. Uh, say hi in the comments. And if you catch the replay, do a hashtag replay for me and let me know what you learn. Um, and if anything is uh, something surprising maybe that you learned from this training. So let's dive in. Let's talk about what lipase is first and foremost. Um, and kind of bust some myths around lipase. So lipase is simply an enzyme that we have in our body. Everybody produces lipase. Uh, it's actually a very important enzyme because it actually helps us break down fats in our digestive system, okay? So enzyme is normally produced by the pancreas um, and it actually can be found in the digestive tract of newborn babies. So a little interesting fact there. Um, and like I said, its main job is to break down those fats that we consume in our intestines. So it's a very important enzyme. Um, li lipase is, is already found naturally in breast milk, okay? So everyone's breast milk has lipase. So that's something that may be surprising because um, usually when we talk about this, people think it's something that's uh, bad or that somehow they have it in their breast milk and it's not supposed to be there, and that's not true. It is in all breast milk. Um, and, you know, the problem is that when 
actually another myth I want to address really quick. It's not that um, there might be too high of levels, because I've heard that before too. You might just assume, okay, so everybody has lipase in their milk, and the problem must be that I have too high amount of lipase in my milk. And research is actually showing that that's not the case that it's actually that the enzyme is maybe more active and the activity of the lipase that's present in the milk um, is higher and it's actually breaking down the fats a lot faster in breast milk that seems to have that soapy or metallic -y taste and that's what can lead us into having issues in our breastfeeding journey is if you do have high activity lipase in your milk it could change the actual flavor and smell of your milk why is that important because sometimes our little nurslings can reject it <laughs> <laughs> and they don't like it, okay? So something to keep in mind is that this isn't an issue until you actually cool the milk down, okay? So you aren't going to notice any sort of problem if baby is getting milk from the tap, okay? So if it's coming straight from the breast or if you are expressing and you're immediately feeding that to baby in a bottle, without any sort of cool down um, time, you're not going to notice any um, lipase activity that's been uh, enough to change the smell and taste of the breast milk. Okay, so this is only affecting the milk that we store. And that can either be in the fridge or in the freezer. Lipase activity does not stop once the milk gets in the freezer. So that's another myth that I wanted to bring here. Um, sometimes I see in some forums, oh, maybe if you freeze the milk right away, it'll kind of freeze everything in time and you won't have to worry about it affecting the taste of your milk. Unfortunately, that's not true. Lipase activity can still continue um, even when your breast milk is frozen. So that's what lipase is. It's not bad. It occurs um, naturally in the body and it is present in all of our breast milk. And it is to help with breaking down the fats for your baby. So that kind of brings me to my next question. Is it in, in any way bad? And like I said, there is no evidence that indicates that high lipase activity is actually less nutritious for your milk. It does not mean that, oh, because it's breaking down faster, all the fat is gone. It doesn't, it does not affect the nutrition, the nutritional value of your milk. So that's something that you can feel good about. High lipase milk is still something you can feed to your baby and feel good about, okay? And I mentioned the only time it's a bad thing is if our little one is refusing to drink it. Your hard-earned milk that you've pumped maybe at work or that you've expressed and that you want to be able to get out for a nice break and have your partner or somebody else, a sitter, be able to feed your baby and all of a sudden they don't want anything to do with it, right? Because of the taste or smell. So that leads me to my next um, portion of this training. What the heck can we do about it, Jesse? I have all this milk in the freezer and I don't want it to go to waste. What the heck? What can I do? So a little side note, a little personalization to all of this. I have high lipase milk. I didn't realize it until very far into my breastfeeding journey with my first son because he didn't give a crap. <laughs> he drank it anyway. Okay, so some babies don't care. They could drink it all day and it doesn't bother them, okay? Now my second, he's a little bit more of a defined palate, okay? He's a little more hoity-toity and he doesn't like my frozen breast milk. Hasn't been a big issue for me this time around because I don't, um, I'm, I'm not working out of the home, I work in the home so I can feed him. But when I wanna get out and have these breaks, this is when I noticed it. I never made the connection until he started refusing the bottle. So I'm right there with you. I'm in the thick of it with you. Um, so just a little personalization to this training. Um, but let's talk about what we can do, okay? So if your baby is not wanting anything to do with your stored breast milk, there is a few things that we can do to help mitigate the issue. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about one thing that I see recommended a lot that is not evidence-based that I wanna warn against, okay? So first let's talk about the evidence-backed treatments for high lipase activity milk. So the first thing that we can do is we can really put on our scientist hats, okay? And we can do a little bit of a mini experiment. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out when exactly your milk starts to turn and starts to be affected by your high lipase activity, okay? So some moms um, or lactate being individuals notice that their milk changes within 24 hours. Some even hours after storing their milk in the fridge or freezer, they notice that the milk flavor changes. Now other people notice that it doesn't change for several days, maybe even a week. So you wanna put on your scientist hat, you wanna run a little experiment with just a little small samples of your milk that you pump and you can try to see how long and when in that time frame your milk does change its flavor. Why this is helpful is because you can then know, okay, when I pump, I need to use this milk by X amount of time so that you can kind of space it out. All right, now this is great for if you are currently pumping, you're working to get your stash up, um, or if you pump just enough to be able to have a few days worth of milk, um, or you're preparing for a night out, whatever that might look like, okay? So this is to help you realize um, how much time you have until your milk kind of starts to get that not so not so sweet flavor that your baby isn't a fan of. Okay, so give that a try. Trial and error, kind of figure out and see when. Okay, the next thing that we can do is if you already have your stash and you have all this milk and you don't want it to go to waste, something that you can do is try masking the flavor, okay? And this is where I'm gonna bring in the not so evidence-based suggestion that I see a lot. And some moms um, or other people recommend, oh, we'll just add some um, non-alcoholic vanilla extract to the milk to help mask it. I scrubbed everywhere I know to look for evidence around this, and I was not able to find any evidence that would back up this recommendation as being safe. Does that mean it's dangerous? I don't know. I can't answer that, okay? So if this is something that you want to try, please run it by your healthcare provider before doing so because there is nothing that I can um, provide you as, as a way of evidence to say that it's safe, okay? However, there are some things and ways to mask the flavor that are safe and evidence-backed, okay? And that includes mixing it with, with freshly pumped milk. So sometimes if we add in a little bit it doesn't have to be a lot, and you can kind of do a mixture to see where your baby's preferences lie, but sometimes even adding just a teeny bit of um, fresh milk can help sweeten the flavor, and your baby might be more prone to actually consume that milk, okay? So that's one option. Another option that you can do is you can add a little bit of formula to your breast milk. Um, that is something that you can try as well for masking the flavor. And then if your baby is old enough, to be eating foods. Another great way to use up that milk is adding it to um, foods. You can mix in some food flavors, you know, oatmeal, some purees, you can use it in that kind of thing to help mask that flavor and um, still be able to utilize all that milk that you have um, produced and been storing. The other thing that I want to note is make sure that it is actually lipase that is causing the flavor to be off, okay? So you need to make sure by doing that test that I talked about that that's when your milk changes its flavor. If that is something that um, doesn't seem to produce the flavor or there's something else going on, it could be um, something that is an issue in your storage process. So you wanna make sure that your pump parts are clean and that that isn't a reason, like there's some bacterial growth or something like that that's causing like a more rancid or sour milk flavor or smell to your milk. So let's make sure, I should have said that first, um, that that's actually the true reason is the lipase and not something else going on, okay? I should have mentioned that, so I just wanted, I popped into my head, so I wanted to mention that now. Um, okay, so the other thing that you can try that some research was really interesting um, that was suggesting as far as um, when you're pumping and you've already identified this as an issue is you can try to adjust your pump settings. Um, research was showing in both human samples and actually in cow samples in research that if um, the researchers had the mothers adjust the um, strength of their pump, uh, it made a difference in how quickly the lipase activity reacted in the milk, which was very fascinating. So that's something you could mess around with as well and try um, seeing if that makes a difference before you store your milk. 
And the final, um, probably most successful thing that I have seen with working um, for fixing this issue is scalding your milk. Okay, so this is also only for fresh milk. Unfortunately, it does not work once your milk has been frozen or refrigerated and you're already experiencing the high lipase um, results in your milk. But this is with freshly expressed milk. If you scald it before you um, properly store, it will help slow down and reduce the amount of lipase activity in your milk. And you wanna be careful while doing this you can do it on the stovetop um, or in a bottle warmer, but you want to make sure that you don't overheat your milk. Okay, so you want to do it until just you start seeing the bubbles form in the stovetop pan, um, but you want to avoid boiling it. You don't want any temperatures over 180 degrees, okay, because that's when you start breaking down the nutrition value of the milk. So you don't want to do that. Um, you just want it enough to slow down that light pace activity, okay. So that's another way that you can help avoid having that yucky, kind of soapy, metallic -y taste happen to your milk. Um, and when you store the scalded milk, before you do that, make sure that you pro properly cool it down before adding it to the fridge. Um, one way that you can do that is either leaving it out um, to cool for a little bit until room temperature, or you can um, put it in a ice bath to help bring down that temperature, um, you know, before you put it in the fridge and freezer. So make sure that you are following the CDC's guidelines is a great place. You can find that in my resources um, PDF that I have uploaded in the file section of this group. Um, that I have a link directly to safe storage on the CDC site, which is um, where, what you want to follow for sure for any sort of breast milk storage and formula um, mixing as well as on there. So that's all I wanted to cover with the high lipase milk. I hope you learned something about what lipase actually is, that it is not dangerous. Your baby can still consume it. They might not even care if you have high lipase milk, but if they do, I wanted to provide you with some evidence-based practices on how you can treat the high lipase milk so that your baby will actually consume what you have worked so hard to collect. Um, and as always, if you need some support around your breastfeeding journey or anything to do with postpartum as far as your own nutrition, your own healing, how to get self-care going in postpartum, all the things, please don't hesitate to schedule a call with me. Um, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and I work with you to create an individualized um, postpartum plan that is centered around your goals for not only lactation, but also your goals for your nutrition um, and so much more to make your postpartum time frame one of rest, healing, and bonding because every every person and every birthing person deserves that um, in their postpartum time frame. If you guys have any questions about this material, drop it below in the comments as well. And I will see you all in the group. Have a fabulous rest of your week.